Good morning, Morabi Rabotai. We are continuing on Masechet Chagiga, and we are on Daf Hey Amud Bet, the very bottom of the Daf. The Limud of Amud Yomi has been sponsored anonymously for the Hatzlacha and Yeshua of the Chabura and everyone that needs it. We are by two dots. Ezehu Katan, as we mentioned, we started this yesterday, uh, read through. A few lines of it quickly. We're going to go back. The categorization of the people who are absolved and patur from going up to Yerushalayim to Harabayit started with the category of Cheres Katan. And now you have to qualify. What, what does it mean exactly, Katan? And we had a machloket between Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel but Shammai holds a katan is a person, a kid, that can't be on the shoulders of the father coming from Yerushalayim to Har Habayit. And Bet Hillel said, no, that's too young. Even a one-year-old could do that. So Bet Hillel said, you, you, you need somebody that could hold the hands of the father and walk by himself from Yerushalayim to Har Habayit. And that's the minimum age. So the minimum age of Bet Hillel is older than the minimum age of Bet Shabbat. That's the machloket that we have had so far. So now the Gemara says the obvious question. You tell me that the shiur, the amount, the cutoff age is when a kid could walk from Yerushalayim to Har Habayit or could be brought from Yerushalayim to Harabayit. We presumably not speaking only about people who live in Yerushalayim. We, we're talking about people who live in Tiberia, in Sfat, north, south of Eris Israel. And it, we're talking about two weeks of, of trip. So how did the kid end up winding up in Yerushalayim? How can you say he's Chayav if he can't be there? And if he is old enough to be away from the mother and come for two weeks to Yerushalayim, so presumably you could also walk from Yerushalayim to Arabayit. So what is this shi'ur, this amount of, of, of uh, distance of Yerushalayim to Arabayit that you're telling me? That seems to be irrelevant. He either could come from home to Arabayit. The shi'ur should be from his house to Arabayit, wherever he is. Why Yerushalayim? So it says the, the Gemara, no, I'll explain it outside because I guess the people were confused. The Gemara says, no, you could have scenarios in which he's there without the father's involvement at all or without being obligated. He just ha happens to be in Yerushalayim. But from Yerushalayim to Harabayit, he will go only if you're Chaya. In other words, you could be coming with your mother because the mothers will come also to, you, to Yerushalayim for a different reason. Even though that a, an Isha a woman is not chayevet, is not obligated to go up to Arabayit. It's not obligated to the mitzvah of Re'iyah. But she's coming to spend time with the family to Yerushalayim. So you have kids who are coming to Yerushalayim, but they won't be going up to Arabayit unless they are of age. So who is going to take them? That's where the, the Betilel comes and says, well, they could walk, but Shabbat says when they could be on the shoulders of the father, and hence the limitation between Yerushalayim and Harabayit, and not from their home to Harabayit. So says the Gemara, Ad hacha man aitie, amar abayim, ad hacha until here, Abaye holds that the mother is obligated to the mitzvah of simcha. Now, this is something that we mentioned in, in the introduction to the Masechet, and we're going to discuss this in Amut Bet, same daf here, that we have three different mitzvot of every every regal. We have the mitzvah re'iyah, which is two parts, going up to Yerushalayim and bringing korban re'iyah, which is olat ha're'iyah, korban olam. 
Then we have Shalme Chagiga, Korban Shlamim of Chagiga, and we have Shalme Simcha, right? Now the Shalme Simcha, Ave Sabachta Bechagecha, also is a mitzvah that is time bound. You can't just pick yourself up in the middle of Adar and go up there and say, well, I'm bringing Shalme Simcha early on, Shiloshim Yom Kodem Achag for, for Pesach. Can't you can't do that. It has to be at the time. So it's what we would call Mitzvah Aseh Shazman Grama. A positive mitzvah that is time bound. Ladies should be. So, why in the world is he saying that the woman is chayav, the mitzvah of simcha? Now, we're not even getting involved with another sugya in Masechet Kiddushin, that seems to say that the woman, the husband is chayav to be mesameach. It's not necessarily the same level of mitzvah simcha. Over here, the Gemara is saying you have to go up as a woman for the mitzvah of simcha taregen. Why? Simple question. Why would you be obligated to go up? It's a mitzvah that says shazman grama. Now, the simple answer is because the pasuk says by the mitzvah of simcha, ata ubetecha including explicitly the household, which is mainly the woman, your wife, inside the mitzvah of simcha. So even though that the regular rules and regulations of being bound to mitzvot would basically say that she should be absolved and patur from the mitzvah, when it gets to mitzvah of simcha taregel, because the pasuk includes it, says, Ata betecha, the Torah is basically saying, I want your wife to be there. As well. So hence, says Abaye, well, the mother is coming, the wife is coming, and the, the wife is bringing the baby. So the only criteria is now that you are in Yerushalayim, can the child go up to Harabayit in his own powers? According to Beth Shabbat, would be riding on the father's shoulder. According to Beth would be holding the hands and walking or not. That would be the criteria. So says the Gemara, if you could hold his hands of the father and go to Arabayit from Yerushalayim, he is obligated. And if he can't, patur, then he is absolved. Now, Heshiv Rabbi Tachad Bet Hillel Divrei Bet Shammai. Rabbi, correct. Heshiv Rabbi Tachad Bet Hillel Divrei Bet Shammai. Now, Rebbe answered, which means really he's asking a question. Rebbe, of course, is a Bet Hillel um, member. So he answers, which is really asking a question on Bet Shammai on behalf of Bet Hillel. How so? Alta, you telling me that the measurement depends on whether or not the father could Take the child on his shoulders to a very young age, much younger than the, the kid holding the hand and walking on his own. So Rebbe says, it can't be. I have a proof from the story of Hanan mm -hmm. Shmuel that a child, although he could be riding on the shoulder of the father, so long as he can't be walking, he is absolved, his patur, and you see that from the story of Shmuel, and that's a raya against you, right? That's a proof against Bet Shammai. What's the story? Says the Pasuk, this is the year immediately after Shmuel was born, which we have said the story many times. It's the 19 years she was barren, every time going there crying. Penina, the second, the second wife, had multiple children. She didn't have children. She made fun of her. She cried. She davened. Eli thought that Eli, the Kohen Gadol thought that she was a, a drunken. And when he realized that he had made a mistake and misjudged her, she, he gave her a bracha. And we mentioned this that when you owe someone a bracha, the bracha is more powerful. The bracha came through. She had this child, Shmuel, next year, Elkanah, who was, by the way, the one that uh, the Gwara says he caused everyone else to go to Harabai. He was, like a, he was the ambassador of Akadosh Baruch. Hu. To, to make people go aliyala regel. So you go and promote it on the way. So it says, um, says the pasuk, he said, okay, let's go. She said, I'm not coming. Not coming. I'm waiting until Shmuel is going to be weaned off and then I could come. Now, 
at least you would you you would feed your child until two years of age. The kid could be riding on on your shoulder, you know, by one. So there's a whole gap over there that, according to Bet Shammai, Shmuel Hanavi, the little Shmuel Hanavi, would be obligated to be brought to Yerushalayim to Arabayit because of mitzvat chinuch and yet. He didn't go up. So says Rabbi, huh? You see from here that the obligation is not from the time that you could go on the shoulders of your father, because then El Kana would tell Kana, what do you mean you're not coming? We're obligated to take him. I'm taking him. But if you say that the age is from the time that you could hold the hand and go up, that's basically the same age as when he stops nursing and he could go up. So says Maram. We, we said it ahead of the time. Now we could read it inside. The Hanalo Alta, she did not go up with Elkanah, her husband, to Yerushalayim. He Amrali Ishai. She said to her husband, Adi Gamela Nar, until he is done nursing. Vehaviotiv, and I will bring him to Hashem. Vehashemuel de Achol Lirkov al Ketivav Shel Aviva Hava. He could have before stop nursing. A child usually could. Uh, be riding on the shoulders of the father, and Shmuel certainly was was not any less than a regular kid. Amale Avua, this is a, a, a massive machloket girsaot. What the text is is it Avua, which would mean this is Rebbe talking. So the father would be Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel answering it, or is Abaye answering Rabbi Zera. It's a different girsaot, but be that as it may, the answer came. I said, hey, a second. You're busy thinking about Shmuel. Why Shmuel would be patur or chayav to go to Harabayit? How about Hana? We just mentioned that a woman is chayevet be mitzvat simcha. Elkanah did not live in Yerushalayim. So he left his wife behind and she did not spend the time of simcha da regel with him in Yerushalayim. How was it mutar for her not to come? We just got finished saying that a woman is chayevet b'mitzvah tzicha atau betecha. So how in the world is Hana staying back? If you answer that question, maybe, just maybe, you will have a window to understand why Shmuel also stayed back. So let's answer that, said Avuha, Abaye, whoever it is in the Gemara. So says the Gemara, Hana Gufa Milo Mechaiva Hana herself would now be Chayevet to go up a Simcha to, to have the mitzvah of Simcha Tareget Shalbe Simcha. Ela Hana Mefankuta Yeterata Chazie Be Bishmuel. Must have been that Hana saw extreme level of sensitivity in this little child in Shmuel. Vechasha Be Bishmuel Lechulsha de Orcha. And she was concerned. Rightfully so, for you know, traveling in the path of yesteryear with this little baby, with a little, little infant, and it will be dangerous. Therefore, it will be patur for her and for him to go. In other words, however you slice this, they had a different heter because of Hana, you see that. So once they had a different halachic reason, giving them a pass on this mitzvah for that year, you can't bring a raya, a proof against Bet Shammai and say, oh, well, you see from Shemuel that the age should be older than just riding on the shoulders of your father. You can't bring any raya from the pasuk in Shemuel because he was absolved for a different reason. And the proof for that is the mother even stayed back because of him. So there... That's what the Gemara is suggesting, that Hanath must have seen extreme level of, unusual level of weakness or sensitivity in this little infant, and therefore it will be a sakana, a safek sakana, and that, of course, lets you off the hook. Well, we didn't have anything to, to, to be left. We wanted to know if we have a question. Rebbe asked a question on the Shita Bet Shammai. Well, halakha is like Bet Hillel, if that's what you're asking, right? That's Gora Yivamod Yudgimel. 
But Rebbe wanted to say, wait a second, how do you deal with yourself even based on this Pasuk in Shmuel? I have a blatant kasha from the Pasuk on the Shitav Bichamai. And the Gemara said, no, it's not such a kasha. Because however you slice this, they were both patur. And the woman was also was patur. And the, the suggestion of the Gemara for the reason of it is because of the um, the, the sensitivity that Hana witnessed in Shmuel. Okay. Ba'i Rabbi Shimon. Now that we mentioned the Shita of Rabbi Bechamai and Bet Hillel about a youngster, now we're going to discuss what's going to be with a child who is not well, a child who is either Higer or Suma, either is limping, has some, some foot problem, or is blind, can't see. Now, we discussed this already before that both of those categories are patur from going up to Arabai. So says the Gemara, Ba'i Rabbi Shimon, he asked, Katan chiger ledivre bet shamai vesuma ledivre shenehem mahu. Now, this is simply understanding Rish Lakish, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish is asking this question. What is the status of a katan who is either lame or blind? So the Maharaj says, wait a second, what are you even asking? Why should he be obligated? The katan is only chayav because of mitzvah chinuch, right? Because when they grow up, it's going to be an obligation. So this katan, if it would have been an adult and would be lame or would be suma, would be patur. So what is your question? Even an adult would be patur. Why are you bothered what the din would be why a katan? Of course it's going to be patur. What's even the shaila? Says the Gemara. Well, that's the question, by the way, that's the question of um, why the Chiger is only a, a, a question on Bet Shammai, because they, they hold you, you take it. But it's mitzvah, even if it would be an adult, it would be patur to go, right? So you'll, you'll, you'll see the answer to your questions included in the answer to the question of the Gemara. So... Get back with it if in 30 seconds you still have a question. Says the Gemara. Hechi dami. The Gemara says, wait a second. What do you, what, what's the case that you're talking about? If you're talking about a person that's not going to be healed from their problem, from their, their, their condition. Even if you will be an adult, will be patur, will be absolved. So of course the katan is going to be patur. We are talking about a chiger that it's just temporary. You know, he's in a cast, whatever it may be, uh, in a, six months from now, six weeks from now, it's going to be fine. Or a suma that is, you know, a temporary condition and it's going to be, mitpateach, it's going to be um, able to see completely well in a few months or few years. So we're not talking about a case that he's going to stay like this permanently, but we're talking about a case that before he becomes bar mitzvah, he's going to be already completely healed. So says the Gemara, my, what's the halacha? Because now I could understand. Right now, if you would have been an adult, right now would be patur, right? But we're doing the mitzvah of chinuch for <laughs> training them for later and this guy before he becomes bar mitzvah is going to be good so maybe uh, as far as the obligation of chinuch goes I should be obligated because anyways I'm doing chinuch for when for when he's bar mitzvah and he's going to be well before bar mitzvah so who says that Chazal would let me off the hook on the mitzvah of chinuch just because now he can't see now he can't walk who cares I am preparing him for bar mitzvah, and bar mitzvah is going to be good. So says the Maram, 
אמר אביי, כל אחד הגדול מחי ומדאורייתא, קטן למה מחנכילה מדרבנן. Any place that the גדול would be חייב מדאורייתא, the קטן would also be obligated to be trained, the מצווה of חינוך exists from the רבנן, and any place that you have כל אחד גדול פטור מדאורייתא, any place that you have the an adult would be patur would be absolved from Torah midra baran katan nami patur so it really depends on the obligation of um of the the adult in that status because the mitzvah chinuch has been patterned has has been um you know instituted following that path now um we are going to Yeah, correct. We just want to know if they're obligated. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you will end up taking a lot of kids who are not obligated because the wife is coming anyways. Right? <laughs> According to this shita, without getting into that sugya in Lamedalad in Kiddushin. So now we go to the next part. This is um, the whole next part of Masechta now. We gave a hakdama, a preface in the beginning of the Masechta on this. We said it again in the beginning of today's shiur that we have three mitzvot of the Chag. You have the mitzvah of Re'iyah, which is physical going up and also bringing korban olat ha-re'iyah. It's a korban ola. And then you have a korban shlamim shalmei chagiga, another korban shlamim shalmei simcha, right? So it says the Gemara, Bet Shammai omrim ha-re'iyah shte kesef. We had the machloket in the Mishnah between Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel. But Shammai holds the Korban Reiya is more important, and hence you have to spend more money on it, double amount, the amount or more, at least than the, the, uh, the other Korban Shlamim. And but Hillel disagreed. They said, no, the Korban Shlamim of Shalmei Chagiga, he should spend more money on than the Korban Ola. Now, let's set something straight here. Korban Ola, of Olat HaRe'iyah is certainly more important. Now, if you don't bring Shalmei Chagiga, what happens? You're a bad Jew, <laughs> right? You did something wrong, but you are in transgression of a kor- mitzvah Asay, right? The Torah says you have to bring Korban Chagiga. Shalmei Chagiga, you didn't bring it, fine, it's, it's bad. If you don't bring Korban Ola, not only you haven't done the mitzvah Asay, you're in transgression of that, but you're also in transgression of Elot Asay. It's much more Chamur. The Korban Ola, because it's a panai rekam. You can't come empty-handed. You have to bring the Korban Ola Tareiya. So certainly, Korban Ola is more important in that sense. But as we will see in the Gemara, both Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai have their powerful reasons why they assume one of them should be focused on more than the other one. And there is the Machloket. So we're going to learn about it. Through a bright that the Gemara brings, Tanu Rabbanam. We learned. Bet Shammai Omri Mara Yash the Kesef Vachagiga Ma'a Kesef. Bet Shammai old that the Korban Reiya, which is the Ola, the Korban Ola, Ola Ta Reiya, should be two times more, two Kesef, and the the Korban Chagiga is only Ma'a Kesef. By the way, um, Korban Ola is. Basically, as the Gemara is going to explain, I'm just explaining it ahead of time. Korban Ola means it goes up to Shabbat. Basically, all of it is burnt aside from the skin, right? There's Hefshet, the, 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 the skin is, is given to the Karim, but the, the entire animal that's outside the skin is burnt, right? So it goes to Hashem, basically. <clears throat> you know, symbolically, that's, that's the, the thing offering to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A Korban Shlamim, Many parts of it goes to Karim and to the Baalim, right? So, of course, it's a higher level Korban Ola because it's offering that, you know, directly to Hashem, all parts of it, aside from the skin, versus the other one that just had a Murim and other pieces that go on top of the Mizbayach, and the rest of it goes to the Karim and the Baalim. So, says the Gemara, Bet Shamai, who hold Korban Hareya is Shte Kesef. And Chagiga is Ma'a Kesef, is Chagiga is half the amount. The reason being, Sheha Re'iyah Ola Kula Le Gavoah, 
the korban reiya being a korban ola goes up all of it to gavoa to Hashem because it's korban ola, as we explained. Ma'ase enkem bechagiga, what's not true by korban chagiga, which is divided between mizbeach, between koalim, and between the the owners, the baalim. If you don't eat it yourself, the, you fulfill the obligation. Well, well let, let's not get into kochim right now, but you have to eat it. Of course, you have to eat it. You can, each one of these things also have a time which they have to be eaten within a certain time, right? So says the Gemara, Ve'od matzinu ba'atzeret sheriba vahen katuv. the additional second reason that the Beit Shammai has is that each one of these, the, the Torah has, has emphasized on korban Ola in Shavuot in Aseret Sheriba Bahena Katuv Beolot Yotermi Beshelamim. That you see more focus on Korban Ola than you see on Korban Shelamim. Correct. Well, we're going to go through the Psukim and back and forth in, in just a moment. Ubet Hilel Omrim, the Bet Hilel say no. Is exactly the opposite. That Korban Shalme Chagiga is what you have to focus on the most. And therefore, that would be the, the two, um, two Kesef, Shte Kesef, and Korban Ola will be only Ma'a Kesef, right? So says the Gemara, the reason for Bet Hillel is. Because Korban Chagiga existed even before Matan Torah, but Korban Reiya, Korban Ola did not exist before Matan Torah. Now we're going to discuss that as well. The old Matsinu, and the second reason would be that you tell me that in Atzeret there was more Ola than Shlamim. Fine, I find you a place that there was more shlamim than Ola. And that's by Nesi'im. In the Korbanot of the Nesi'im, Sheriba Vahela Katuv, Beshlamim, Yotermi Beolot. You see, there there is more shlamim than there is Ola. So says the Gemara, Ubet Hilel, my Tama lo Amri ki Bet Shammai. Why doesn't Bet Hilel say like Bet Shammai? Bet Shammai seem to have a, um, very valid reason that you see Korban Ola is more important, it goes up to Shamayim. And it, why doesn't Bet, Shama, Bet, Bet Hillel agree with Bet Shamay? Says the Gemara, let's go through the reasons. The fact that you said the reason is it should be more important because it's all burnt to Hashem for Hashem on the Mizbeach. Adoraba says the Bet Hillel. That's exactly the reason that it should not be more important. Because Chagiga Adifa, Korban Chagiga should be more important to it It has two usages. It's not just the Gavoa, it doesn't just go on top of the Mizbeach, but it also is eaten by the family and by the Kohanim. And the fact that you said we should learn from Atzeret, that there is more Ola than Shlamim in Atzeret, says the Gemara, Danin Korban Yachid mi Korban Yachid, ve'en Danin Korban Yachid mi Korban Tzibur. We learn a private offering from a private offering. Now, what is the Atzeret? What is the Korban Atzeret? Take a look at Rashi over here. Matzinu ve'Atzeret, they will bring seven of them. All of those are olala Hashem. Now, what is that korban? It's a korban tzibur done once in Betamekdash every year on behalf of the entire Klalise. Right? So that is the, the argument of Bet Hillel back at Bet Shemai. say, you're bringing me something that is a, a public communal korban, right? So says the Gemara, 
over here, I'm teaching you a raya from Korban Yachi. And why is it that Bet Shammai don't agree with Behilel, right? Bet Hillel say a good reason also. They say, well, there, wa there, there was in, in the Korbanot of the Nesi'im, there was more. And also the, the Korban uh, Shlamim existed before the Dibur. Now, what is this parasha referring to? Actually, if you take a look at it in the Chumash, it's talking about, um, well, not talking about, it is put after Matan Torah. It's after Parashat Yitro. It's already in Mishpatim, right? That they brought Nare Bene Israel and they brought Korba, Korbanot. But we know that's En Muktam Ume Uchar Torah. And the Gemara here is saying that this incident happened right before Matan Torah. So it's really before the giving of the Torah. And Bethilel say, well, we had Korbanot Shlamim there. And therefore, it should be more important than Korban Ola. Right? So says the Gemara. My Tama lo amrike bet Hillel. Why don't they agree with bet Hillel? The Kamrat Hagiga Adifa Diyeshna Lifne Adibur. The fact that bet, bet Hillel says that this is Adif is more important because it existed before Matan Torah. Riyya Nami Yeshna Lifne Adibur. Korban Riyya also existed before the Matan Torah. Now, what is their argument? The argument is in the same pasuk that you have for um, the Korban Shlamim, according to Beth Hillel. The same pasuk also speaks about Korban Reya, the Ola, Korban Ola, right? It says Olot. Now, the, the, the pasuk is that Moshe Rabbeinu sent Na'arebere Israel to bring Zevachim. Olot uzvachim shlamim. So Beth Hillel is understanding that this shlamim that we mentioned is Shalmei Chagiga. So Beth Shammai says, if this is Shalmei Chagiga, the Re'iya that says the Olat, the Olot, that the, 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 the Pasuk says right before it also is Olat Re'iya. So if you are suggesting that Korban Shalmei Chagiga existed, before, prior to Matan Torah, because you see from the Pasuk that says, Korban Shalamim, Lashem Parim, the beginning of that same Pasuk also says, Olot, Vayalu Olot. So if you suggest that this Shalamim was Shalme Chagiga, I will also argue that the Ola was Olat Reya. So don't give me this whole business that it existed Shalmei Chagiga before Matan Torah. Well, if you suggest that that's Shalmei Chagiga, I will also suggest that the beginning of the same pasuk that you're bringing talks about the Korban Ola, and that Ola is talking about Ola Treya. So therefore, I offset your Raya on that as well. Says the Gemara. Shalmei Chagiga not in Yerushalayim. It's before Matan Torah, but the concept existed. Well, this is Shavuot for you, basically. I'm not sure if that's sayable, but it's, again, this is right prior to Matan Torah, right? And it's the understanding of the Betilel was, well, you, you, you're, you're posing a question on the entire learning of the Betilel then, because they are saying that this was Shalmech Chagiga. But Shabbat doesn't have your problem with them. So, well, he says, suggest that, fine. But if so, I have the same problem with you again, because the beginning of the Pasuk says about Ola, and hence, according to you, that would be Ola Treya. So what are you telling me that this existed before Matan Torah? That also existed before Matan Torah, according to your own reasoning. So says the Gemara, where the Ka'amrat Nelaf Menesi'im and the second argument that you have that we should learn from the Siim, from the Korbanot of the Nesim in the Hanukkah Hamizbeach, Danin Davar Hanoeg Ledorot, Midavar Hanoeg Ledorot, Ve'en Danin Davar Hanoeg Ledorot, Midavar She'en Hanoeg Ledorot. We could learn something that is one, um, not one time, but is Noeg Ledorot is a constant thing that happens. We learn it. 
uh, from something that is constantly happening. And we don't learn something that's constant from something that was on time. In other words, we want to learn the halachot of korban chagiga and korban re'iya that happens three times every single year. And you want to bring a raya from what happened one time in the Jewish history when they wanted to inaugurate the Mishkan? You can't do that. They have different rules and regulations, completely different rules and regulations. As you see in Parashat Shemini, there were different rules for Hanukkah the Mizbeach, and therefore you cannot compare the korbanot of that year and that time with the korbanot that Jews bring every single Chag in Beit HaMikdash. It's the minimum, it's the minimum, and it has to be the minimum of the one has to be more than the minimum of, of the other. You can spend more money on it. You can spend more money on it. So says the Gemara. So that's why each one of them does not agree with the reasoning of the other one. So now, what's the pasuk? Well, we got we got to go through the pasukim. What's the reason that the Chagiga exists before Matan Torah? As the Pasuk says, that the Pasuk reads the full Pasuk, that the Pasuk reads the full Pasuk, right? So you see over here, it says, Zvachim Shlamim. The Shema is saying such a good argument. You're reading half, there's like a selective uh, vision of the Pasuk. You're saying only the second half of the Pasuk. But Shema is saying a very good argument that the beginning of the Pasuk talks about Olot. Says the Gemara, no. Pasavri bet Hilel, Olash ikribu Israel be midbar, Olat tamid habay. It was not a korban ola of re'iyah, but that was an ola tamid. They had to bring korban tamid, just like you have in Beit HaMikdash every day in the morning and the afternoon, korban tamid. This was also korban tamid. Ubet Shammai Savri, ola she'ikribu Yisrael ve'midbar, ola t'reya habay. They both agree that it was korban ola, of course, as, as the Pasuk says, but what type of ola it was, it is, it's a, it's a matter of machloket, but he let's say it was not Ola Treya, it was Ola Tamid, because they had to bring Korban Ola of Ola Tamid, and Bet Shemai say, no, this was an Ola Treya. Because Rat Hashem will continue this in the days to come. Uh, uh, 